to be a black girl. I'm inspired by the trail set before us by generations of powerful and empowered women. Our lineage teaches us that we are integral, even when society dismisses us. God bless black women, the mothers and caretakers, the aunties and rule breakers, the sisters and sister friends who have nurtured me, whose grace under pressure have made it possible for us to be. As Nikki Giovanni says, art is not for the cultivated taste. It is to cultivate taste. And we are the cultivators, unaccredited but ever present, knocking down barriers. Our achievements allow us all to rise, from the suffrage and the civil rights movements to putting a man on the moon. The one thing I know for sure is, we are all leaders in every form that we assume. To be a black girl, Throughout February, we celebrate the luminaries of our community, ones who have given us the permission and space to aim higher through their art, their activism, and their audacity. For centuries, Black artists have used their platforms to shed light on the issues facing and challenging our communities, while also celebrating our resilience and innovation. The various forms of art created over the years have allowed the world to witness our joy, our pain, our resistance, and most importantly, our humanity. As a young woman, the work of legendary writers such as Toni Morrison, James Baldwin, County Cullen, and Gwendolyn Brooks honed my storytelling abilities by highlighting the complex stories of ordinary black people in this nation. The people who did the best they could with the few resources at their disposal. The people who were determined to craft a livable today and create a better future by pushing this nation to live up to its highest ideals. Today, we see artists and activists rising up and carrying on that same tradition. They are using their voices to bring attention to the stubborn realities of systemic injustice that have been allowed to persist for too long, a constant source of anguish and despair. But they're also showing us what is possible when we join together to fight for the future we deserve. Here in Georgia, a state that gave us Martin Luther King Jr., John Lewis, Amelia Boynton Robinson, and other freedom fighters. A coalition of activists, artists, voters, and volunteers work together to flip the state for the first time in a generation and elect the leadership necessary to enact the policies that will move our communities forward. This too is history. We don't need platforms, followers, or titles to serve our neighbors and build our tomorrows. We simply need the same integrity and courage of those that came before us. Our time is now. Let's lift our voices and work our hands to create the future we deserve. This is probably the scariest moment in my career that happens repeatedly. What if I make mistakes here? What if something goes wrong? What if I do something I'm not meant to do? There's so much pressure in this space. Being an artist is an absurd career choice. So back to this scary canvas, this space for freedom, possibility, ideas. That's a more positive way to think about it. When I draw a line, I feel like I'm connected to the world. When I draw a line, I feel like I'm at peace with myself. When I draw a line, I feel like the line is sacred and it was always there before me. As a black queer artist, I think there is some responsibility and the responsibility there is to be seen and to be known. And when you can be seen and known, then you can inspire. I did not see anyone that looked like me doing what I was doing when I was younger. I didn't know it was possible. I had to imagine something that no one ever imagined for me. When you're working in black and white, you can't hide. Everything is visible. You have to be confident in that stroke. When I'm in the UK, I'm biracial, I'm mixed race. And then I come to America and I'm black. 
But then you live in America long enough and you realize that it has to be black and white here because that black struggle is so real, it's so big, it's so long that I have to pick up some of that weight. When I think about Black History Month, I think about words like accountability. ACC. R is a tool that has legacy. R are instructions that can be carried across time where lessons can be learned. Why? All the lessons are out there. Until there is real accountability and acknowledgement of what has happened, it's always going to be black and white, and, and we always will have to pick some of that weight up. But now we have these three stick figures that are helping each other reach to this new height of accountability. You know, often I think about what needs to shift or change for a young black artist to have a real successful career. And I think ultimately it's just value and respect. Until the artists, until black artists are really valued for who they are, until that happens, nothing will change. I felt that moment where I should stop and for the first time take account, take a moment to see what I've created here. Every time I draw and every time I finish, it's a surprise to me that it works. It's a surprise to me that it feels good. When I was drawing, it allowed me to get things out. And initially, I was doing that because I was in pain. But then I continued to do that because there was joy. Drawing is that gift. It is that tool that we're all given connecting your heart to your head to your hand. And that cycle is a prescription for healing. Chantal. I'm Chantal Martin, and I'm an artist. Happy Black History Month. My name is Ziwei, and I am famously a black woman. Today, I will be celebrating the Black History Month baddies. Black women not only get things done, they are the spark. The first black history baddie is Maya Angelou. She knows why the caged bird sings. Now, Maya Angelou is a brilliant author, a poet, a novelist. I mean, the woman has credits. She brings her experiences as a fry cook, as a sex worker, as a coordinator for the SPLC into her art. So shout out to Maya Angelou. You will always be in my heart. The second Black History Month baddie is Ida B. Wells. She was a journalist who pioneered the first known database for lynchings in America. This woman won a post humus Pulitzer Prize. That legendary behavior is pivotal in terms of how I approach journalism and the work that I create as a comedian cosplaying as a journalist. In the third Black History Month, baddie is Beyonce Knowles Carter. I love Beyonce. She's been on the charts all my life. Bills, 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 Survivor. Say my name. I mean, have you seen Beyonce in concert? If you haven't, you know, there are videos on YouTube. All three of these black women have given so much to black history and I owe them my career. God bless America, God bless black women, and God bless me, a black woman in America. When black people move, we make the world move with us. Our power is in the swivel of our hips, our dips, sachets, and plies. We are choreographers, steppers, ballerinas. We are the children of Josephine Baker, Catherine Dunham, Alvin Ailey. In the world of dance, Alvin Ailey is a divine architect, a mover and shaker. Literally, he created movement. It's about giving, it's about loving, it's about wanting to make something where there was nothing before. It's about watching young people grow. It's about creating choreographers, it's about creating dancers.
Raised by his mother in Rogers, Texas, Alvin Ailey first touched the dance floor at 18. As a performer and choreographer, he communed through dance. He knew that with dance, he could convey the joys and blues of blackness. In 1958, Ailey founded a dance company where he could reflect the black experience upon the world in his own way. Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. What a feat it was to fashion a space for black expression in the heat of a civil rights movement when whites only was both a law and a state of mind. Through his many performances, Ailey transported audiences into the many dimensions of what it means to be black. From his first show at the 92nd Street Y in New York City to his 1960 signature work, Revelations, to his 1971 premiere of Cry a 16-minute ballet about a black woman's journey from bitter sorrow to brutal hardship to ecstatic joy. I May Cry 1971 as a birthday present for my mother. It's a tribute to black women. It has to do with uh, the struggles of black women in an abstract way through images of slavery and servitude and in the second part, rage and anger, and finally, uh, joyfulness. Cry goes from being in Africa, and being forced onto a ship and taken across the seas and forced into slavery, putting up with the hardships of living in, in a ghetto, but triumphing over all the madness that this life can bring. My black woman, you know, and still triumphing over all of it with the head held high. holds up by itself. Cry is, is just this work of art that needs to be seen forever and ever and ever. He made Cry and dedicated the performance to all black women everywhere, especially our mothers. This one woman tour de force is as timeless as the wind. He created it on his muse, the legendary, Judith Jamison, who has passed it on to generations of other Ailey dancers. With Cry, it's not just about stamina physically, it's emotional stamina and spiritual stamina because you are carrying the weight of the world. Ailey saw dance as a complicated chemistry of movement, grace, and strength where he could share stories from the past. The dance world is forever indebted to Ailey. His vision and the safe space he created where rhythm births freedom. Somehow, he knew what we all know, that with dance, we own our story. <laughs> <laughs>